Okay, guys, um, some of you know that uh, I, I am a Christian, so before we do anything today, I'm going to pray, and I'm just going to pray a simple prayer, because um, it's just the Lord's Prayer, and you don't have to pray with me, and then I'm just going to give more information, and I just want to read something from somebody who sent me something who has got nothing to do with tourism or anything, just to inspire you. Then we're just going to go quickly through the rules um, of how we're going to go down in convoy. And uh, then we're going to drive down to Nelspruit. Okay, so let's just pray. Father, I'm super humbled. Before you, we all come today, and we are very desperate. Our rights have been trampled on by a few, and we feel very, very hopeless at the moment. But we are rising up, Jesus. So, Father, that's why one of the prayers you said to us is to pray the Lord's Prayer, and that's what I want to do right now. So. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come and may your will be done, Jesus. Forgive us for our sins as we forgive others who sin against us. And lead us also from sin, Jesus. Take us away from temptation. Give us this day our daily bread. Because at the moment, Father, many of us do not have any livelihood coming in, any income, and this is getting very real for us. So protect us as we go down. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Open South African Tourism Reasons for Protesting and Mission Statement, 17th of June today. We in the tourism industry, from cleaners, waiters, hotel personnel, managers, tour operators, guides, restaurants, and the airline industry, are far worse off than what the government understands. Whole families are without income or hope. Many of us have had no income for over five months and see no foreseeable relief in the near future. According to Stats SA, we are losing 748 million a day. Just think of that, folks. 748 million rand in South Africa per day we are losing. As the tourism sector continues to be locked down, the economic and social cost is too great as tourism accounts for more than 8.6% of the GDP of South Africa. There has been no clear indication or timeline given from the government when South Africa will open again to international tourism. As the tourism industry requires careful planning ahead, sometimes months in advance, the lack of a communication from the government with regards to a timeline harms our industry not only now but in the long run, run as well. The government has made illogical decis decisions such as allowing taxis to operate at 100% capacity, that means 14 people in one taxi when making short trips in order to appease the taxi operator's militancy. However, we have not been allowed to accommodate even one tourist in our open safari vehicles. We are not interested in tours and handouts from the government whose systems have malfunctioned time and time again and have been proven inefficient. This has turned contributors into beggars. We acknowledge that people can die from the virus. However, more than 98% of people recover from the virus. We need to stop this lopsided scaremongering as tourists are vital for the survival of South Africans in our economy. The government and the various COVID-19 advisors should all have their salaries taken away just as we are experiencing right now then they might understand the extreme desperation we are under. We are desperate and willing to comply with the outlined protocols for the safety of tourists. This economic catastrophe is, far, is a far greater threat to us than the virus. All tourism sites, such as hotels, national parks and heritage sites, must be open for international tourism now, as the time has already arrived. In the run. tourism industry, we support so many families. The 1.5 million jobs is not just the, the actual people that work here, we've got to look at it at a global scale. It's a snowball effect. There's so many people outside of the, the tourism industry that are also going to be affected when tourism dies off, as it's doing at the moment. Um, we're looking at subcontractors, we're looking at people that supply soaps for a lodge, whatever. Um, it's so huge. People on game farms, there's so much at stake here. Um, yes, there's a virus, for sure, but we've got to deal with it. We've got to put protocols in, we've got to do things like, for example, if you look at what Tanzania is doing at the moment, they're putting protocols in and, and they're surviving and they're doing something and, and they, they're actually winning. Um, we're not even close to that and it's, it's actually terrible. Um, that's, that's just my 20 cents on that.
Uh, drives that we're going to be having. We'd like to put pressure for the government to really understand how desperate it is for us. We don't have a salary. All of the people working within the government department have their salaries. But we need to pray uh, at least pay our debts and uh, we don't have any money and there's no time schedule for us to um, to know when tourism is going to open again. So we're not interested in the payouts from the government. We'd rather earn our own money. Yep. Okay, guys from MTPA, so we want to work with you, but we'd like to also put pressure uh, through you guys, the main government, everybody, because we can't live like this anymore. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, here's a name list and what we stand for, and I'd like to give it to you guys.